دخل الشرك في عبادة فسدت فالحدث إذا دخل في الطهارة ناخذ الجملة جملة Stella, I was studying on the portal with the four principles. Um, I came across a line. Uh, I was wondering if you can clarify. It said that shirk nullifies all acts of ibadah. Ma'am, Ajwa, that's a, a very important point, and it's really the foundation of the deen. It is such a big matter that every single Muslim should know what shirk is. Because when you worship Allah, you want to make sure your ibadah is valid and accepted by Allah. But if shirk is involved, it's nullified, right? So exactly what is shirk? That's the, that's the question. Okay, shirk is when you associate partners with Allah or you set up a rival with Allah. And a rival means someone that's equal to or a counterpart with. So you can see now why, if you're going to give Allah a partner you're in worship, your worship's not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in this regard, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Don't make and ascribe rivals with Allah. Now this is such a great sin that it's the only sin which is unforgivable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what does that mean an unforgivable sin? It's a grave sin, right? Every other sin that a person does, then it's possible that Allah will also forgive them for that sin, or if they repent they'll be forgiven for that sin, or it's possible that they're going to be taken to account for that sin, but as long as they don't ascribe partners in worship of Allah, then ultimately they're going to be successful, right, in the end. So this highlights the danger of a shirk and the reason why it has to be avoided. Someone might think, okay, if I did that in the past, does that mean that I can't be forgiven? It doesn't mean that. It means that you have to repent from that action. And to repent from shirk is to stop doing it and to now only submit and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners.